All Academy. Always with you. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to this online video sessions on basic thermodynamics. So, in the previous session, we have discussed the very important topics that is uh, on the work and heat transfer. Then, even we have solved the very important numericals uh, based on these concepts. Now, in today's session, we're going to discuss about the the specific heat and the enthalpy, the definition, how it is defined. Then we'll study the relation between the two specific heats. Then we'll at the last we're going to study the very important topic that is perpetual motion of first kind. So based on the first law, how this perpetual motion is defined. So without wasting much time, let us begin with the today's session. Now, what is this specific heat? Now we all are aware that. So when a same mass of an, a different substances, for example, if I consider a uh, wood uh, of a same mass and similarly of one kg of uh, water. So then if I want to raise its temperature, then I require different quantity of or different amount of energies to raise the temperature of a uh, wood by one degree Celsius. Whereas along with that, if I want to increase the uh, water temperature by one degree Celsius, I require some different energy. Now this, uh, the, the difference in the energy or the difference in the amount of energy required gives us the, the scope for the definition of na, the specific heat. Now to give an example, we need about a uh, 4.5 kg of energy means we need a 4.5 kg of energy to raise the temperature of 1 kg of iron from 20 degree to 30 degree. Now, if I consider if I consider 1 kg of an iron which is at 20 degree Celsius, if I want to raise this temperature from 20 degree to 30 degree, I need around 4.5 kilojoules of energy to raise its temperature by 1 degree. However, however, the water needs, the water, however, it needs around 41.8 kilojoules. If the water, however, if I use water of 1 kg of a mass, then it requires 41.8 kilojoules of an energy to raise its temperature by by for from 20 to 30 because we have already considered the the rise of uh, the temperature from 20 to 30 of an uh, 1 kg of an iron so it requires how much 4.5 kg whereas to raise the temperature of water or a liquid from 20 to 30 degree celsius i require a 41.8 kilojoules of energy now you have got that the specific heats so these will be different for different material. Even though the mass is same, the specific heats for a different material, it will be different. Therefore, it becomes necessary. It becomes necessary to introduce the property that enable that enable us the, to compare the energy storing capacities of in a various substances. And this property, we call it as an a specific heat so what is this specific heat it is the property that will helps us to compare the the quantity of energy uh, in the various which is storing capacities in a different material so that is known as a specific heat now again this specific heat can be defined for two conditions one is specific heat at constant volume now, what is this specific heat at constant volume? Now, the specific heat of a substances at constant volume, so that is denoted by Cv, is defined as the rate of a change of the the rate of change of a specific internal energy with respect to the temperature when the volume is kept constant or held constant. Or in general, I can say that. It is the energy required by the temp. It is the energy required for a to raise the unit mass of a substances from a 
वन डिग्री सेल्सियस इट इज डिनोटेड एज ए स्पेसिफिक हीट एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम सो वट इज अ सिंपल डेफिनेशन ऑफ स्पेसिफिक हीट एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम it is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of an unit mass of any substances by 1 degree celsius at constant volume condition then it is known as specific heat at constant volume which is denoted by cv then now similarly if i want to define the specific heat at a constant pressure it is almost the definition remains the same only here the the condition is we have to keep the pressure as a constant throughout the process now the specific heat of a substance at a constant pressure that is cp is defined as the rate of change of specific internal energy with respect to temperature when pressure is held constant or in simple words i can say that it is the amount of energy required by an unit mass of an substances to raise its temperature by 1 degree celsius under the pressure is kept constant when pressure is kept constant so this case helps us to uh, define the specific heat at constant volume here you can see this in this uh, experiment so if i want to raise the temperature from t1 to t2 so i have to keep the pressure as a constant that is a specific heat at constant pressure so once again i will repeat what is specific heat at a constant volume it is the amount of heat or amount of energy required to raise the one to raise the unit mass substances by 1 degree celsius at a constant volume then it is a specific heat at constant volume similarly the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of an unit mass of an substances by 1 degree celsius at a constant at a constant pressure at a constant pressure condition then it is defined as a specific heat at constant pressure and specific heat at constant volume is denoted by cv whereas specific heat at constant pressure is defined or it is denoted by the letter cp now we have uh, we have understood or we have uh, a study the definition of an a specific heat at constant pressure and specific heat at a constant volume is there any relation between the specific heat of an a constant volume and specific heat of an a constant volume or i can say that cp is there any relation between cp and cv yes obviously there is a relation between the cp and cv so that we'll going to derive in this session now let us consider an ideal gas being heated at a constant pressure from t1 degree celsius to t2 celsius or it may be kelvin or in in the terms of degree celsius so assume that a ideal gas which is being heated at a constant pressure from t1 degree celsius to t2 degree celsius according to the non flow equation now according to non flow equation what is the equation that is the amount of heat is equals to change in the internal energy plus the work done that is q is equals to u2 minus u1 plus the amount of work done now for an ideal gas for an ideal gas u2 minus u1 that is change in the internal energy can be defined in the form of m into cv that is specific heat at constant volume into the change in the temperature that is m cv t2 minus t1 now this equation let us substitute this u2 minus u1 that is change in the internal energy in the first equation that is q is equals to mcv t2 minus t1 plus w now in the constant pressure process we all know that the work done is given by that is w into p into dv dv in the sense change in the volume that is i have written in the form of p into v2 minus v1 that is the amount of work done when at a constant pressure condition now since p1 v1 is equals to m r t1 where m is a mass of a substances or gas or r is an a gas constant and t is a temperature where p is an a pressure and v is an a volume at condition 1 similarly p2 v2 is equals to m r t2 p1 v1 are the pressure and volume at condition 2 similarly t2 is a temperature at condition 2 
m and r will be the constant now we all know that in this case as the pressure is kept constant so p1 will be equals to p2 as considered as an p so it is a constant pressure process both p1 and p2 will be same now we know that therefore the work done equation what is that work done equation this equation becomes w is equals to m r t2 minus t1 since the pv is a kept constant i will taken out so the left out terms will be m r t2 minus t1 this is amount of work done now on substitution so let us substitute let us substitute this work done in the this equation that is q is equals to m c v t2 minus t1 plus m r t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 now let us take m and t2 minus t1 outside because both side we are getting m as in a common term and t2 minus t1 as in a common so let us take these as in a common outside now q that is amount of heat added or the is equals to m into t2 minus t1 cv plus r now we all know that at a constant pressure process q can be defined in the, the in the constant pressure process the amount of heat added is equals to mcp that is t2 minus t1 means the change in the temperature into the specific heat at constant pressure into its the mass of that substances or a gas so that is q can be defined in a constant pressure process in the form of q is equals to mcp t2 minus t1 now let us substitute this equation in the the, the above equation now let us substitute this equation in this equation that is q equals to m t2 minus t1 cv plus r now equating these two equation i have substituted here so we have already having m cv plus r t2 minus t1 and q we already defined and that is substituted here that is m cp t2 minus t1 now this t2 minus t1 get cancels again this m is get cancelled so the left out term will be cv plus r is equals to cp now rearranging the above equation we get cp minus cv is equals to r now here is a relation between the two specific heats at a constant volume as well as constant pressure that is cv minus cp is equals to r what is cv it is a specific heat at constant volume minus specific heat at a constant pressure gives us a r what is this r it is an a gas constant now here is a relation between the two specific heats and this question a uh, couple of times or many times this question is asked in the examination derive the equation or derive the relation between uh, two specific heats or sometime they will ask a uh, prove that cv plus r is equals to cp sometime they may ask cp minus C, uh, r is equals to cv so in a, a different way they can ask the this simple derivation and this is very simple if you know the all the relations you can easily write it so what is the relation between cp and cv it is a cv minus cp is equals to r now what is the term enthalpy so we have already studied the specific heat at constant pressure and specific heat at constant volume now there is a one uh, important term that is called specific or enthalpy which is denoted by letter h now enthalpy of a substance that is h is defined as sum of internal energy sum of internal energy and the product of pressure and volume that is sum of internal energy and the product of pressure and volume so symbolically it is given as h is equals to pv plus internal energy now the enthalpy is not measured directly however the change in the enthalpy is measured which is the heat added or heat lost by the system so we cannot directly measure this enthalpy directly how we are measuring temperature pressure volume so that we are measuring directly at particular uh, uh, or a particular condition but this enthalpy cannot be measured at particular condition so we can measure instead of measuring the directly so we can measure the change in the enthalpy can be measured that is in the form of delta h so that will be in the form of heat added or heat lost by the 
system. Now, enthalpy is the state function. Enthalpy, very important. Enthalpy is a state function as it depends on the state functions that is TPU, that is temperature, pressure and internal energy. So many in the competitive exams, in gate exams, you may have, a, uh, you may get this kind of questions. Enthalpy is a state function, path function, point function, none of the above. So the right answer will be, it is a state function. Enthalpy is a state function as it depends on the state functions of temperature, pressure and temperature, pressure and internal energy. Now, the enthalpy can be made into an uh, intensive property or the specific property by dividing its mass. So, whenever if any uh, property, if I want to make it the specific property, I have to divide it by the uh, unit mass. So, that is called as a or the specific enthalpy. If I divide this enthalpy H by the mass, then I will get it as a specific enthalpy. So that is H is equals to H is equals to enthalpy divided mass is equals to specific enthalpy. The next one more uh, very important topic in today's session is the perpetual motion machine. So you what is this perpetual motion machine? It is a hypothetical machine which violates the first law of thermodynamics. That is very important. You see this, which violates the law of thermodynamics. So again, in this perpetual motion, we come, we, we have perpetual motion first kind, perpetual motion second kind we are having. So the while the, uh, while discussing the second law, we'll we'll discuss the perpetual motion second kind. And here we are discussing the perpetual motion for the first kind. So the perpetual motion, it is a hypothetical machine which violates the first law of thermodynamics. In general, I can say that the machines which violates the, the law of thermodynamics are called perpetual motion machine. Again, in that one, specifically if they ask perpetual motion machine first kind, then it is the machine which violates the first law of thermodynamics. Similarly, if perpetual motion to second kind, if it is asked, so it is a machine, it's a hypothetical machine, which violates the second law of thermodynamics. Now, the first law, we all know that it says that the energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, it, but it can be transferred from one form to another form. That is a very simple definition we have already studied uh, in the earlier classes. Now, the hypothetical machine which can supply or do the work continuously without consumption. That is very important here. Without consumption of an, any energy, which violates the first law of thermodynamics. Thus, this or such kind of machines are called perpetual motion machines of the kind first or first kind. So this is why they have been uh, called as a uh, perpetual motion first kind and uh, many times in the examination they will ask the question write a note on perpetual motion first kind so you have to draw this simple sketch so here i have shown animation you can draw it any simple uh, diagram then you just explain it this thing so why this is what is a first you have you have to tell what is perpetual motion machine it is a hypothetical machine which violates the laws of thermodynamics then explain what is the first law of thermodynamics the definition simple definition then you say that a hypothetical machine which can supply or which can do the work continuously without consumption of an energy, then it violates the first law of thermodynamics. Such a machines are called the perpetual motion machines, first kind that is PPM1, PPM1. Okay. <clears throat> so hope you have understood about this perpetual motion. Again, in the next, uh, while, while discussing the second law, we'll discuss the perpetual motion, second kind. So, okay, my dear students, hope uh, the whatever uh, the today's uh, class, whatever we have discussed, it is uh, understood to you people. So, we as we have already discussed in today's session, the specific heat, enthalpy, and relation between the two specific heat, that is a CV minus CP is equals to R, then perpetual motion, first kind. So still, if you are finding any difficulties, you can comment it in the comment box. We will try to clarify your doubts.
click on subscribe button and press the bell icon to get updates from all academy